Hello, welcome to the Friday, November 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today posted about his Splunk dashboard that he's using to look for anomalous DNS activity. Pretty nice queries in here. He promised for tomorrow a blog post that describes how to actually build this particular dashboard. But the queries themselves are of interest, of course, and could also be applied to other systems, not just to Splunk. And Oracle released a critical surprise update for PeopleSoft. This update fixes a total of five different vulnerabilities in Jolt. Now, Jolt is part of Tuxedo, which in turn is the application server that PeopleSoft uses to deal with non-Java applications. And of course, given that this was a surprise update, the vulnerabilities addressed here are rather severe. The first one does allow an attacker with network access, but no authentication to take over Tuxedo and essentially compromise PeopleSoft systems via Tuxedo. Second one, not quite as bad because the attacker first has to log in, but once the attacker logs in, the attacker is able to read arbitrary memory from the system. Then we also have the ability to brute force domain passwords to gain read-only access to data, a stack overflow that could be used to bypass authentication, and finally a heap overflow that, while difficult to exploit, can also be used to bypass authentication. So a total of five different vulnerabilities definitely rated as patch now. I didn't see any exploits published yet for any of these vulnerabilities, but given the prominence of PeopleSoft, I'm pretty sure someone is already working on an exploit. Now, this vulnerability in Jolt affecting PeopleSoft is a typical example of a vulnerability that's being introduced to software due to dependencies. GitHub is trying to help developers that are using GitHub to identify these vulnerabilities better. GitHub does allow you to define dependency graphs. They essentially tell GitHub, tell you what your project depends on. Now, if any of these dependencies is vulnerable, GitHub will now automatically alert you. In order for a vulnerability to be added to GitHub's system, it has to have a CVE ID and with that has to be listed in the National Vulnerability Database. At this point, they're only doing this for JavaScript and Ruby and Python support is supposed to be coming in 2018. And Google published an interesting project to GitHub that they're calling PUFFs, short for Parsing Untrusted File Formats Safely. The goal of PUFFs is to create essentially a library, a programming language that allows you to parse file formats without being exposed to the typical vulnerabilities like buffer overflows. They're mentioning as example file formats like images, audio, video, fonts, and compressed archives. And if you remember, these are typical file formats that are leading to vulnerable libraries. The trick here is that Puffs really takes care of all of the memory management and the like, so you're not able to make some of the typical C mistakes, but to maintain still the speed, the Puffs code is actually then compiled into C and then you can include it just like any other C library in your projects. At this point, they're just calling it a proof of concept or a version 0.1 at best, as the status message says. So how to use this library may still fundamentally change in the future, but interesting project. If you're interested in helping out, take a look at it. And a Japanese blogger did put up a list of various illegal websites that are run as a hidden service and how it is possible to reveal their real IP address. 
The blog post is in Japanese, but even just by looking at some of the code snippets and such, you may be able to make out some of the techniques that are being used here in order to discover the real IP address of that particular web server. Of course, these are all fundamentally configuration mistakes, coding mistakes that are being made on these websites, but it kind of also shows how difficult it is to really well hide a website uh, using a uh, hidden service via Tor or other systems. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Now, next week we have Thanksgiving on Thursday here in the United States. So I'll probably only run this podcast Monday through Wednesday. We'll see if uh, there's anything worthwhile to talk about on Wednesday. Otherwise, it will just be Monday and Tuesday. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.